bomb from the political center that so much of the confusion began and why so many states got the strength and courage to break free of Ottoman rule. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Ottoman Empire had crumbled due to economic and military stress, <coughs> which compounding poor political arrangements. Over the last 150 years, the Ottoman rulers had been so preoccupied with fragmenting states and these distracting deals with Great Britain that the former world leader in technology and science was left behind. The technological advances that had been held by the Muslim world for so long had slipped away into nations such as Germany, the United States, and the half-hearted ally, Britain. It was ultimately after being seduced with the idea of becoming more westernized that the leaders established a secular government and the chain of caliph was completely destroyed in 1922. Just seven years later, Islam was completely removed from the governing structure. This ended the final Islamic empire. The sad state of affairs in the Islamic world today is due to the breakdown in centralized Islamic rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us in the Quran that we should not take non-believers as our advisors in matters of faith. The Turkish leaders of the 19th century allowed non-Muslim British to come in and advise the removal of Islam from the government. Islam's greatest enemies have always come from within. Those who betray the faith and turn against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For as long as the Muslims were dedicated to the path of Islam and the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a great prosperity and many things were brought forth in the world out of Muslim centers of learning such as Andalusia, Damascus, and Baghdad. It is only by recognizing this and reclaiming the true Islam again that we Muslims can reclaim our strength as a people, reestablish the line of Caliph, and unify the Islamic world. We can only do that when tribalism and nationalism are abolished. Since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, Muslims all over the world have been heavily focused on nationalist ideologies and have left behind the religion itself. Some of these nationalist movements, such as the one which succeeded in the establishment of Pakistan and Bangladesh, were righteous causes. However, it is never in the best interest of the global Muslim community to get caught up in nationalist movements. It is even less helpful to maintain tribal allegiances. Should we speak out against injustice? Certainly. Should we align ourselves to such a degree that we lose our religion and the nation or political cause becomes our religion? No. No. Absolutely not. This is the very reason why terrorist organs, organizations exist. The blending of religion with political agendas both become twisted and lost. I'm not saying that these political agendas are all wrong. Here at The Message, we're not here to make political statements of any, of any type. What I am saying is that we have to be very careful to align our religion and politic. Every time there has been a nationalist movement combined with a religion, it has caused chaos and bloodshed. Even as far back as the first fitna in Islam, which became, which began, with the assassination of Khalif Uthman and ended the assassination of Khalif Ali. What we're all hoping that you learn tonight is basically this, that Islam has a long and rich history in every part of the world that non-Muslims should realize Islam is not a religion of the poor, the crazy, or the militant. It is not a religion of fear, oppression, or the sword. Rather, non-Muslims should understand that Islam is a religion for all people of all times. And it is only by removing Islam that the people of Muslim nations have become all the negative things that are attached to Islam today. Muslims should understand that we have a long history to claim that goes far back beyond our islands here in the Philippines and has touched the very every nation of the earth. 
so that we can stop thinking in terms of race or tribe or nation and start thinking in terms of brotherhood, unity, and the restoration of a worldwide Islamic consciousness. Now, you know, we have some time. Um, I want to go ahead and get into how Islam spread into the Americas. You know, most history books will teach you that Islam arrived in the Americas sometime in the 1800s through slave trade. Some history books are generous enough to go back to the 1600s, but almost all of them are firm in the resolution that Christianity